Yeah, so here's the overall schedule. So we've got, um, well, it's the advanced cluster usage. We start with array jobs, then parallel, the talk from CSC, and then GPUs. So Simo, your screen is ready to share also. So yeah, yeah. About array jobs, what can you tell us? Yeah, so so let before we go to the array jobs, let's go back uh, one step and remember what we did with the serial terms. So what we did was that we we made an instruction, we made a recipe. So if we remember this, we made a recipe for our program. So we we had instructions uh, to the computer itself what it should do, like and we, with what program it should do it with and, and what kind of data it should read. So we, we tell, to, told the queue system that, okay, we want these things to be done and please run it somewhere we, where you have the resources uh, to do it. So, so basically we told the, told the system that we wanted these tools, we wanted to run this recipe and we had these ingredients. So the data, what we have and program that we have, mm -hmm. we, we, wanted it to do something so this is like the normal like non-interactive serial job that you run well what if in this case you would want to run uh you you would want to do uh, different kinds of pasta like you want to do uh, instead of only spaghetti you want to do spaghetti one pot of spaghetti one pot of penne one pot of tagliatelle one pot of uh, ravioli i don't know like running out of pastas here but but uh <laughs> but uh maybe somebody wants wants their spaghetti uh split up and somebody doesn't so maybe maybe you want I to guess. do different kinds of uh uh like pots and, of pasta and i guess the metaphors here might be something like data science where you have 10 different sample data sets you want to run the same analysis on yes or or, or let's say you want to do the same analysis with different seed values, uh, different random number generators, so you get uh, a statistic of a system, or maybe you have different kinds of uh, topology, uh, or different kind of like initial state for a physics system, or different kinds of forces at play. So some sort of like parameter change, some sort of data change, something changes, but all of these would be uh, like separate from each other. So basically, like if you mess up like penne and spaghetti at the same same um same pot you you mm. like you get mess <laughs> you don't get a separate uh mm. spaghetti and penne uh, so what you would have to do if you would have only give it to one cook uh like they would have to like first put one pot of spaghetti then wait it for for it to bo boil and and be finished and then they would have to take the pot off and put another pot uh that would have have a let's say penne in it and and you would have this kind of a se like for loop of serial jobs, like sequential uh, amount of serial jobs. Well, this is of course it means that the overall time you need to run, uh, overall time you need to cook all of these different kinds of pasta, it would be like add adding all of the different pastas together. Mm -hmm. But this can be improved a lot with array jobs. So the idea behind array jobs, um, <clears throat> so if we go to the Whoops, array jobs mm -hmm. tutorial. So the idea is that with array jobs, you can define like one recipe. So here, if we think about the uh, the thing again, like we want to change maybe the ingredients. We want to change the ingredients here. We want to change the data that the program takes, but we want to use the same program mm -hmm. to do the same things. So we don't change the recipe. Of course, in real life, you'll probably cook the spaghetti and penne a bit different times, but maybe maybe the program finishes faster with certain data set than with another data set. But we want to change some of the ingredients. We want to put some, certain parameters in. We want to put certain data in. But we don't have to change the recipe. So in array jobs, uh, you, define, uh, you define an array of these serial jobs that can all run independently of each other, but they can uh, distinguish themselves uh, based on this number called array ID. So this identification number, 
and then they can behave differently based on this number. So basically they can choose, let's say, a different data set based on, on, the, on this number. They can choose different parameters based on this number. So you have, you run, let's say, 10 copies uh, of the same simulation and they all run independently with the same kinds of resource requirements and same kind of like, uh, same kind of recipe, same kinds of pr programs. So does... um. Does this choice get made in your code or in Slurm or in like how how does it know what data to use? Yes, so this is the important part that like the Slurm only knows uh, you you give the Slurm just script and then you tell it to run an array uh, like run this as an array mm -hmm. and and based on what's in your script you can then do all kinds of logic that describes like okay how do you how do you map this number into some parameter or some some piece of code or how do you map this into a data set so so basically if you know about like countable infinity so like you can have if you have uh, numbers from zero like the array jobs run from zero to basically infinity of course mm. there's some limit i don't know what it is but but like you have integers basically that you can use uh, as as your numbers so if you can map it to something else like let's say a data set it's this one integer maps to some other thing then you can use it in the array job but you need to co like co write the logic yourself mm -hmm. okay, in yeah. your script so should we do an example um, can we yeah let's go see. straight to example that that okay. uh yeah, if you scroll scroll a bit down here, there's uh, your first array job. And it's best to start with this kind of an example. And if Richard, you yeah. want to take the screen. Okay, here we go. This is and... my screen now. Yeah. So, okay, so we're basically starting from the beginning here um, with a new array job. So I'm starting a new project. So I guess there's the usual stuff we do. For example, I will change to my work directory. And yeah, that's there. I will make a new directory. 2022. Okay. Um. Yeah, so I'll put the array example directly in here. So use nano array example dot sh, and I will save time by copying and pasting some of it. And there's also yeah. But the important part is this s batch. Um, so it looks like a normal slurm argument, just like we've been learning, I guess. Equal uh, sign. That's an equal sign, yes. Yeah, so I guess array is just a normal slurm argument to sbatch. And then we'll put the commands below. So what Richard is like, if you look at the script uh, as a whole, you notice that the, it's it's basically the same kind of a script that we ran previously. Like you have a time and a memory requirement, and then you have an output file there defined. Mm -hmm. But the only difference is that, well, the output name looks a bit strange. We'll talk about it in a second. And then you have this dash dash array. So what this dash dash array basically tells to Slurm is that, hey, I want 50. Uh, 16 of these so so from 0 to 15 so <clears throat> you have 16 copies of the same job so basically you tell the slurm that okay i want 16 of these and for each one of them set this slurm array task id to be a number from 0 to 15 mm -hmm. so each of these jobs gets its own number so if you yeah. now run it we should see like okay. what would happen control x to save I submit with sbatch like usual array example. Okay. Slurm Q. So, okay, I see here it says these things are running. 
this job ID, so not... the 0, 1, 4, that's the array IDs, correct? Yes. So you notice that now you have multiple jobs in the queue at the same time, and all of them get the same, like like the master job ID, this first number, which tells like what is the mm -hmm. job ID. Yeah. And then they get a subscript, which which is like this, like the array ID. So this is the number yeah. of this individual job. Mm -hmm. uh, so in in the chat, uh, the or HackMD, there was a question of like, do these run on different cores, mm -hmm. and are they parallel? And then the answer is that they are like embarrassingly parallel. So embarrassingly parallel means that you just like, like if you know, like you basically like. Um, you you copy paste the answer. You do the yeah. do the same thing, uh, but like or, with a small difference. Or, what, what about yeah, how this, would you describe this cooking metaphor? So let's say five hundred years ago, people were not that efficient with with cooking. Like the pots weren't as well. Someone had to maintain the fires. So in order to cook a meal, basically parallel meant you had these people and they were actually working together. Like the person making the fire had to communicate with the person putting the pot on the fire. But embarrassing parallel is basically you have different people and they don't need to communicate at all. So they could work in the same kitchen. They could work in different kitchens. And like in the past, there was a lot more of the parallel with communication because computers weren't so powerful. But these days, more and more work can be made embarrassingly parallel. Like you can make an array job that uses one node and that one node using TensorFlow or whatever modern application, it can use the 20 to 40 computer cores on there to do a job. So basically array jobs make a lot more sense for a lot more things these days. Yeah, and, and you should think of the array job as like completely independent of each other. Like they are completely independent. Like you shouldn't be, you should think of them as like uh, they are, they're running as like this kind mm. of like each of the array jobs uh, runs. Um, it's like their own like 15 world. different jobs. Mm. Yeah, like you could do yeah. like S batch submit a job, S batch mm -hmm. submit a job, and you could have like different scripts for each of these jobs. Yeah, uh, that only have like you could mm -hmm. copy paste the uh, the script, the su submission script like fifteen times and submit all of those scripts. Yeah. but then you have like it's really hard to manage the thing. Uh, yeah. But instead, you can have this one script that basically manages a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And this becomes very, very important when you have like, let's say, like if you remember yesterday, I showed this example where you had this, um, <laughs> we had to do feature extraction for these different music genres. And there uh, you could have this one script yeah. that launched like 10 jobs on, on that you all use GPUs to do this analysis. So, mm -hmm. so you can have this kind of like, we'll talk about how yeah. to how to do this uh, mapping uh, later on. Should we show the output let's, here? Yeah, let's so look at the output. Let first. me list the files in this directory. And we see there's array example 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Let's look at 0 okay. using, well, let's cat it. Oh, that seems suitable for the theme of the day, huh? So we cat this I'm array task number 0. And if we cat one and so on. So basically we had 15 or actually 16 completely separate runs here, each of which did something. And if our shell script um, was able to do something different with each of these inputs, then we'd be able to analyze 15 different data sets at once. Mm. And you notice that the output file name, uh, in the output file name yeah. the description in the Slurm script, uh, Richard had this this percent sign, capital A and percent sign, mm. uh, lowercase a. And these basically mean, these are what, like these kinds of like, uh, like placeholders that you can, yeah. you can use in your output files to, to make certain that like every every yeah. job gets its own output file so because otherwise they would all cram to the same output file and and the input and output yeah. would, like it would be impossible to read what's happening yeah uh, so <clears throat> the capital a means uh like the main array id and the lowercase a means the 
the the task ID. Yeah. So should we have a small like 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 people could run this exercise or mm. this this thing themselves? Like could we should we have mm. a, like a small five have five minutes have, or something? Have they already been doing it? I wonder. Yeah. Mm. Well, if if not, then they could try it out themselves. Yeah. So, like, if you just copy paste this yeah. in, into Nano into an editor and submit it into the Q and C, that you get yeah. the similar kind of. A but we're getting response. questions in HackMD that will be answered if we go further down. So I think maybe. Yeah. I yeah, propose we'll, we. We'll... I propose we show some of the ways this is used. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. The concept is already clear. So. Uh, yeah. yeah. If you let's go. Um. If you submit. If we look at more screen. examples. Your screen. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I can. Yeah. So if you go here, uh, in, below, uh, in the array examples, here's an example where you can. Like, <clears throat> let's say your code, uh, takes a different input file, uh, in it. Quite often, the input files, like if you have data sets or something, they can be indexed by some number or something like, or at least they can be like renamed so that they are like data set zero, data set one, and so forth. Then it would be easy to do something like this that you have like a, a S run my application, take the input, and then you have the array task ID there uh, to determine which data file you use. So this is like the the embarrassingly the the most embarrassingly parallel of them all because like you don't have to do any kind of mapping like you you use a number and you use the number somewhere mm -hmm. so this is like very very yeah, easy way of doing it yeah uh, other way of doing it like you could have this kind of like a hard coded arguments in your slurm script so so this was the st strategy that i had in in my example where basically based on the Slurm RI task ID, you would use this uh, case statement in, in Bash to determine that, okay, this variable seed would be uh, something else. Like that, that would be de uh, determined based on the, the number. Of course, this is something that, that only like usually works if you have relatively few, few examples, like because then you can have like, um, yeah. Yeah, you would have only like, uh, you would have a lot of lines there in the end. So it's easy, easiest when you have only a few examples. Uh, but but basically, you can do this kind of a mapping. Uh, one other option would be to uh, take the parameters uh, and put them into a file. So you can have, for example, here we would have like iterations.txt. And then based on the array task ID, we would choose a line in this file. So this gets a bit more like bashy, <laughs> like you uh, like you don't necessarily <laughs> need to understand how this works because it's it's uh, like a bit messy, but but you can just copy paste it and it works. Yeah. So basically this set command, it chooses this, it prints this certain line from this file. Mm -hmm. and, and this is very useful like way, for example, to find uh, or set these parameters because like you can if you think about like you do different ex experiments and and or different parameter combinations or parameter values you can always add more lines to the file and you can always increase the number of array indices mm -hmm. the array indices doesn't need to start from zero mm -hmm. so basically you could do like a, you could write 10 parameters that you want to run uh, then you can submit an array job of from uh, one to one to ten, uh, so that you can uh, take the line number from one to ten and 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 do those experiments. Okay, if you want to do ten more, you can add ten more lines to the experiments that you have run file, and then you can run experiments from eleven to twenty and so forth. Like you can constantly increase the number of parameters, and you don't ever have to like. Uh, remember, did I run this combination of parameters, or, or you don't have to always yeah. rerun the whole thing <laughs> to to run uh, again and again. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, maybe maybe we could go to the exercises. So that's probably the best way of of like testing it, testing it out for yourself. So so choose in the exercises. There's um, uh, the exercises again are in the HPC examples repository. So, so 
we in the serial jobs we had this memory hog program that we wanted to run uh, or we ran uh, this program so in the first exercise you can choose whatever strategy like you can even try multiple of these strategies that are outlined uh, in the array page so one of these strategies to map uh, this memory number so you can choose you can use a file here you can use uh, this this structure you can choose uh, whatever structure you want to use uh, to do this mapping but but basically uh, somehow you should get, be able to run an array job where you run this memory hog script with different values of uh, of memory and and yeah see how it uh, see how it works okay so i put this in hackmd uh, array exercises how long should yeah. we give for this um, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Um, maybe we maybe should have 15 20. minutes and then, then look what's the, what's the situation and okay. continue. Sounds and good. There's a good question, a good question, uh, there that's been written, uh, currently, mm -hmm. I will quickly mention this that, so does the memory parameter specify the total amount of memory for the full array job or the individual job in the array and it it's the individual job in the array so it's not you don't have to do any multiplication or something like all of the other parameters of the scripts so you can think of it like when slurm sees the array thing it basically does copies of the of the initial script and then it removes the array uh line and then it just thinks of the rest of the script as a normal slurm serial script so basically like like with you can think of it like it, it would perform exactly the same except that you have like this array line there so so if you specify memory requirement that's a memory requirement for a single job if you specify some parallel parallel requirement or or if you specify a GP requirement or whatever, they all are for each of these like array jobs. So it's basically like just serial job copy pasted uh, multiple times with this one parameter set. Okay, so we're back in 15 minutes. Okay, see you then. and we're back so i guess now we go over the exercise we'll do it as yeah. a demo and you can keep working now if you'd like and then we have a break uh simo would you like to answer the this one question now or after the um, maybe maybe after after the demo. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Let's do yeah. it. So I'm so, going to so my uh, screen. So maybe we should quick. Yeah, I'm thinking. So, what's the status in the Zoom? Uh, like, can you, uh, if you have done the exercise or not yeah. done the exercise, can you add it to the uh, to the well. count so that we know what's the status? But yeah, like let's, think, let's start. Anyway, let's go and we yeah, can. Yeah, let's go with the exercise. Okay. But it would be good if you added so that we know that did we have enough time to. Yeah. So here we go. <clears throat> We're doing number one basic array job. Uh, make an array job that runs this with five different values. So I will start the usual way and I'll take the existing file and copy it. Um, so I will copy array example dot sh to array array exercise dot sh, and then I will nano it. So let's see. So what looks the same here? Bin bash okay. Array fifteen minutes. That's good. Memory. Hmm. So we're going to need more memory. I guess now we actually have to answer that question. So array 
the array argument says that it's a um, it's an array job. Everything else is the same for all jobs. So that means the time in the memory has to be the same for everything. Um, so yeah, like we, basically each each of these other jobs will get the same requirements, but they they don't share among each other's requirements. So like each of the jobs has 15 minutes to do its own task, mm -hmm. array task. Each of them has five gigabytes of memory in this case yeah. to, to do its own thing. Yes. Okay, there, put the commands below. Let's get rid of that. Uh, okay, so now we need the example. So I'll do what I'll usually do and scroll up and say, oh, this looks good. So I'm going to copy this part and uh, <clears throat> stick it down here. Yeah, Richard is going to uh, be um, doing uh, using this hard coded example because there's going to be there's not that many uh, like parameters that we need to do. Yeah. We need to do only only five of them, so it's easy to use this hard coded thing. So it's going to write here to use 50m. I think it needs to be capital. Yeah, yeah, hundred. 500 thousand and five thousand so so now okay. every every one of them gets and then, does uh, and now he's going to be changing the s run the executable so it's a uh, python hpc examples slurm And then the memory will be mem. And this is the environment variable <clears throat> yeah. that's been set. And here. and just just for the uh for demonstration purposes, let's add a quick sleep there. So there mm -hmm. was this parameter called uh, called sleep, I think. Uh, yeah. uh, that you could add to to make it so that it doesn't immediately mm -hmm. uh, quit so that we can we can see what happens there in the background. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, does this look good? It. So I yeah. will exit and save. <clears throat> um, yep. So I know I need to clone the HPC example, so I will copy and paste the git clone command and run it. Uh, I had to enter the passphrase for the SSH key. And now if I list, should I clean up some of these older files? Um, yeah, maybe we could clear them. So I'm going to use the remove command with a glob. So asterisk dot out. So all of the output files of the array are going away. Yeah. OK, this looks pretty clean. So let's sbatch it. or sbatch array exercise. OK. Hmm, why is it taking so long? I'm guessing that there's so many so many tasks going. OK. Maybe the Slurm Q. Oh, I yeah. didn't change this. It's still to 15. Oh okay. yeah, yeah. Now, well, now we see what happens when we yeah. have have a bug in the system. So, so, yeah. So for those, no, uh, we have probably something fun happening. Yeah. But now you now you see that all of them are queuing at the same time. So Slurm gives this nice bracket notation that makes it so that like it's easy to easy to see the. Um, there we go. See the jobs. Yeah. I've yeah, so now some of them are running. And you notice on the right side that some, in the node list uh, in Richard's output that some of them run on, on one node, some of them run on a one node, because like in the eyes of a Slurm, Slurm only sees the amount of CPUs and the memory and time you requested. So it doesn't care. Like it, you didn't tell it to run on a specific machine or specific system. So it will it will find you a correct system. It might be in that case, like that some of them end up into the same machine if it's empty uh, and some 
might end up in a completely different machine. But mm -hmm. because all of these tasks are independent, it doesn't matter. Like it, the only thing that matters for these programs is that you get what uh, what you wanted. Uh, yeah. There's a nice question. Could you modify the memory requirements like percent %A times 100? So in something like shell, abstractly, you could do this, or even in your code. So take the array task and multiply it by something to get what you need. Um, yeah. But the, yeah, like in the, yeah, you can you can okay. write some sort of wrapper that creates it, but, but uh, the Slurm, like when you submit a job, uh, they will get like a shared requirement and usually like the idea behind the array job is that you want to use the same kind of do the same kind of thing so so if you have completely different kinds of things like if you want to cook pasta and you want to cook lasagna it's completely different kind of thing so you need different like you cannot use the same recipe for both of them so if you have a different recipe you should uh, do a different array task basically like if it's yeah. completely different like it, uh, most of the time the stuff will be the same so yeah it's it's going to be fine yeah okay let's look at them so my prediction is this won't work because there was no task zero in there or was there oh okay it worked it said trying to take five megabytes of memory and yeah yeah 50 yeah and then yeah. one so the 100 megabytes and what, we go up to three and then we go to four and then we go to five and this probably has an error uh, look too few arguments so basically that mem parameter didn't get set um yeah, so so basically because like Richard didn't change the array indexing, but like if you show the script yeah. again, uh, because there was um... yeah, so this went to fifteen. Yeah, the array index and went to fifteen, went to but four. then we didn't have yeah we didn't have a mapping. So for some some uh, for the rest of the parameters, it wasn't set, so so you get some sort of error. So so yeah. the important thing about the array is that you you have some sort of an idea of like how do you map these numbers that Slurm sets zero to whatever or whatever number to whatever. Uh, how do you map them into some parameters that then your code understands? One other option is to is to like in your just give your code the number and your code does the logic for you. Like you can have in your program that it opens a configuration file and then it reads line something like you can use whatever logic you want to to do this mapping but the main thing is that if you're given number three how should do you behave and, and that's like if you if you if you uh do some uh do some uh mapping do some kind of like an idea that, okay like if i get the number three i will do something mm -hmm. and then uh, if you have this kind of mapping set out, you can do whatever you yeah. want. Mm. Three, look at HackMD. So there yeah. is some interesting questions down here. Uh, do we do that? Yeah, that makes the sequence like in Python. Mm -hmm. This, in theory, is possible. Oh, wait. Well, uh, yeah, this that's is not, not the right syntax, yeah. but yeah. the general idea. No, um, yeah, but the percent %A is only evaluated for the uh, output. Yeah. Like, like, you can look at the Slurm configuration, use... but those wildcards are, are only evaluated for output fields. Should I quickly show these two here? Because they're quite similar. Um. Yeah, okay. Uh, in this case, um, I had actually specified 5,000 megabytes. So mm. let's see. Uh, I will copy. Yeah, yeah. So what like in I... the example, the, there was this question that, like, if you set a lower limit, which of these jobs are killed? So, yeah. 
you notice that all of them have the have uh, the same requirement. Mm. And if you set like the requirement to be something that doesn't fit there, you will uh, they will get killed. So what I'm about to do is sort of so it's advanced like it don't just watch don't worry about following this this is bash scripting which we're not teaching here but it will sort of show you the kind of things you can do with um with bash and answer two of these questions here so in bash to do math it's like this so do i need a dollar sign here or not yeah um maybe mm. not quick to check so here i've multiplied the array index by 100 and to make sure i put the m in there it's here using this other bash syntax so let's go from one to ten. Yeah, but yeah, but set the memory requirement to be uh, lower so that some of the jobs will fail. What about one hundred? Uh, that should yeah. fail some. Yeah. Or yeah, like it in should. the example then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so these SBATS requirements, they those you cannot set programmatically, like because the idea is that like you all of the stuff in the array job should be similar. Like they should be similar. They should have similar kinds of requirements because otherwise, like the script doesn't really like uh, it doesn't uh, describe the jobs completely. <laughs> like mm -hmm. if you if they depend on something. Yeah, maybe yeah. I will copy this to HackMD. Someone can format it well. Do you want to see what happens if this runs? Actually, let's just do. Yeah, let's go. Should we do a test, or do you think this is correct? I guess it probably Yeah, it's works. correct. I, I tested the, okay. tested the syntax. So. OK. So again, let's emphasize what we're showing now. We haven't taught you how to do in this course, but it's the kind of things you can't do. And if you come by garage or ask someone or read shell like bash scripting guides, you can learn how to do all kinds of things like this. And then, um, yeah, and that will be quite nice for you. OK, so we see it's running. Notice the ones that have the high memory usage died quickly. And now these lower ones are sleeping. So I guess that means it's working, huh? Can someone add in HackMD a link to the shell scripting course? Because that would be a great yeah. resource. Yeah, for I, I was. This. Yeah, I, I was. Okay. So, so yeah, like you can do all kinds of stuff uh, uh, with with the shell and all kinds of mappings like this. There's also the advanced example there. So, so these array jobs, like we should have maybe said it earlier, but like you, they should. Um, and we should have said this actually uh, yesterday as well. So normally when we think of jobs, when we submit them to the queue, uh, they should have some sort of like, they should be uh, somewhat heavy uh, or somewhat like they should do something. And usually what something means in this kind of a cluster environment is that they run at least for about half an hour. So half an hour is like this like minimum benchmark, minimum size of a job that usually is recommended like because like if you if your job runs only for minutes or seconds it's it's usually bad for the cluster and bad for you because most of the mm -hmm. time is is wasted uh by setting when when the job is being set up and stuff like that so it's it's not good idea to run very short jobs mm -hmm. and with array jobs it it becomes easily this kind of idea that okay like i will make a for loop that runs array jobs or something like that and then you might have like thousands of of second one second jobs or something like, mm -hmm. like jobs mm -hmm. like these and that's not the point the point is to have 
uh, like at least half an hour jobs at the minimum and have those run. So your job, if, you, if your job, like let's say you, your job has to do analysis for, for 10,000 parameters, 10,000 parameter numbers, and you, all, every one of them takes one second. So you don't want to have uh, 10,000 one second jobs. Instead, you want to like bunch them up together so that you have about half an hour per job and and then you can use the array construct to run them all so so there's an advanced example in the uh tutorial that describes how you can do this uh like chunking basically like if you have a have a index you can have a, like a faster running index and a um a so, a slower running index so you have a like i heard you like loops in your loops so this kind of a, like a like situation where you have multiple indices running uh in the array job so so in in the case so basically you could have like ten thousand jobs and each array job would take like i don't know like thousands so you have yeah. 10 jobs that all run thousand indices or thousand numbers each so you can have this kind of like loop in a loop situation and the overall idea should be that the runtime of the job should be about half an hour at least uh, and hopefully not not like days and days because then it's it can get risky that it it fails or something so yeah, yeah. so it's a good idea to uh, to check your job that, so that it runs a correct amount and if you have this kind of a situation where you have lots of small things to do it's better to collect them together into one job that then runs for a bit longer but but there's like a structure in the documentation of of this kind of like a like yeah. fast running indices how do you deal with them yeah so now it's time for the break i'm excited about all of this discussion here unfortunately we have to mm. go on but please keep the questions yeah. going and yeah. if and, this and... is fascinating to you read more about bash like you will learn so many interesting things for um yeah yeah because like like if you think about it like lots of the things like like people in windows world and and mac world and every uh, they we usually like have some like hotkey extensions or something like that that does like clicking for you like you move your mouse and you you program your mouse to do a click for you or you you have some sort of hotkey that presses multiple buttons for you or, or type something and it saves time for you and bash has lots of these kind of similar things it's of course command line but but like you can write your thoughts what you want to be happening when you do something so that you can have lots of like things happen with with without you like always having to type the same thing again and again and the array thing is array structure is one of those things that like if you if you know that you're going to you're going to be doing something again and again and again you can easily write it as an array structure because like you can see see the whole picture and you can like split that okay yeah like i will split this job into multiple pieces so so learning about bash and learning about array structures uh, is is very helpful, especially if you have a problem that is not like unique. You don't work with only one simulation. You have to do ten simulations with different parameters. It's usually very easy to do it. Like then you have uh, suddenly a lot more resources at your disposal. So you can have array jobs, like you can have hundreds of CPUs running at the same time, uh, hundreds of simulations running at the same time with uh, yeah. with array jobs with minimal changes to your code. Okay, so I have to go for a break, 10 minutes. See you soon then. <laughs>